absolute postcard conditions here in the Pacific Northwest today as Stanford and the University of Washington have at one another and we talk about the fact that really this is a must game for almost for both teams but particularly so for the home team Huskies lead the series very close as you see 52 51 but the Cardinal has won six of the last seven and uh, I think you have to look at Brevin Knight as being probably the key player in this ballgame. Yeah I would think so uh, Barry a along with Tim Young don't forget Tim Young really got the best of McCullough in the first uh, meeting where Stanford defeated the Huskies at Maples and I think that's another key matchup. All right let's get to it then we'll meet the opening lineups with the public address announcer here in Seattle Eric Radovich. Eric. Cardinal of Stanford. Starting at forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, number five, Peter Sauer. Starting at center, a 7'1 sophomore from Santa Cruz, California, number 55, Tim Young. The three guards for Stanford, first a six-foot sophomore from Los Angeles, California, number 11, Arthur Lee. Also at guard, a 6'3 sophomore from Kansas City, Kansas, number three, Chris Weems. And completing the starting five at guard, a 5'10 senior from East Orange, New Jersey, number 22, Brevin Knight. Now the starting five for your Washington Huskies. Starting at forward, a 6'9 junior from Dallas, Texas, number three, Mark Sanford. Starting at center for the Huskies, a seven-foot sophomore from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, number 50, Todd McCullough. The three guards for Washington, first a 5'10 junior from Elizabeth, New Jersey, number five, Jan Wood. Also at guard, a 6'4 freshman from Dell City, Oklahoma, number 21, Dion Luton. Completing the starting five at guard, a 6'4 senior from Portageville, Missouri, number 23, Jamie Booker. Barry Tompkins with Dan Valwamini. We welcome you to Heck Edmondson Pavilion. We're in Seattle, Washington on the campus of the University of Washington. Today it's the hometown Huskies against the visitors from Palo Alto, the Stanford Cardinal. And we are just about set to go. Mike Montgomery, uh, a lot looser tonight, uh, today I should say, than he was on Thursday night. He was very tight. He knew that was a victory that he had to get. And sure enough, he got it. It might not have been pretty, but uh, as he said, I'm going to take it. Yeah, get out of Dodge with a win. And uh, Mike, yeah, is loose this afternoon. Knows, knows if he can uh, come up here and uh, sweep in, in Washington, Washington State. I mean, it will bode well in terms of making the NCAA tournament. So Stanford, uh, I think, on a little bit of an upswing, uh, Barry. They're starting to play better than they did uh, in the mid part of the season. Both these teams with five games remaining. Let's take a look at the key matchup in this ballgame brought to you by Henry Weinhardt. And it is down on the low block. And the last time these two hooked up, it was no contest. No, and uh, certainly you see those numbers in the graphic. Tim Young did get the better of Todd McCullough in the win at Maples. And McCullough, a guy, very proud young man, certainly wants to play well uh, this afternoon. But Tim Young, a force inside. When he receives the ball on the block uh, and you let him catch, he can catch, shoot, take it to the goal, and block some shots. So Tim Young has had some injury problems, has not played quite frankly as well as he could, but had a pretty good game against Washington State on Thursday night. Todd McCullough hoping he can uh, even the score here this afternoon. Yeah, both these guys really looking to step up off uh, recent form. McCullough's gotten himself in foul trouble early in ball games. And, and I would have to think to that end, Danny, that uh, the officiating crew in this particular game, very experienced, and I think that will help the play down on the low post. Yeah, I don't think you'll see a tremendous amount of fouls called with this officiating crew. You've got Garibaldi and you've got Richie Ballesteros out there and Bill Kennedy. Very uh, experienced group of officials, and I think they're going to let them play. I think they'll let them go inside. McCullough gets the ball, and it's blocked by Young. So the first little skirmish is won by Tim Young. Arthur Lee tries to lob the Young. The loose ball picked up by Luton. Here come the dogs. Two on three. Booker. Luton up for three. And it's tipped by McCullough. 
the Stanford ball. Yeah, so far, pretty good job by Tim Youngberry. He's been able to establish position inside, and of course, Bobby Bender hoping to get his team back going again. Uh, uh, Bob uh, is, is a fine young coach. His team plays well here uh, at Heckhead, and, and you see his uh, his numbers as a coach. So certainly a guy that's got this program going in the right direction. I completely agree with you. I don't think it's going to be long before Seattle is going to be a real force in the Pac-10. Trying to get the ball right down on the block to McCullough and let him out. Young so far, he's blocked two, and he has negated anything McCullough has wanted inside. Stanford yeah. just came, not very proficient at the offensive end. Pete Sauer down on the block, got it up and over Mark Sanford. Well, Young in the midst of a hat trick here. <laughs> yes, he is. Hey, he's got two blocks and uh, a couple of rebounds. and. They get the third block in the first half, but well, they're going to go right back at McCullough. is going to say, okay, I'm going to do it again. At that time, they're going to get Young with the elbow, trying to push McCullough a little bit off his position. Now, people say, well, why are they still throwing the ball to this big guy? Young has blocked two shots. This is the reason they're throwing him the ball, because they want to pick up some fouls on Tim Young. They know the official will make that call eventually. And Mark Sanford with his first basket. And in fact, the Huskies first pass. Important for Mark Sanford. Now he's a guy, and believe me, I'm not making a comparison to Michael Jordan here, but you know what they say. I hope not. No, 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 no. <laughs> Please don't do I that promise. to me. The game just started. I promise I'm not. But the fact of the matter is, he's a guy that when he gets the perimeter going, it makes him that much more of an effective player. Very much like Jordan. That's the only comparison okay. I'm making. I'm not Thank trying you. to say. Thank you. <laughs> oh, oh. Booker. The drive, the basket, but no offensive. Yeah, Mark Sanford saying they should count the shot, and, they, and they're not going to. I don't think so, because because the contact occurred. Did they count the shot? They say I, it was after? I thought Richie Ballestero signaled that the basket counted. No, not on a player control. If it's a player control that happened before the shot, then uh, they can't count that basket. Bounces right back to Brevin Knight. And they didn't. It's, it's still 4-2 Stanford. Right, right. I thought I saw Richie give it. Yeah, no, they can't, they can't on a player control. Good, good movement and touches on the ball by the Cardinal shot. Now, here's where Stanford has an advantage. Just give it a breath at night when the shot clock runs out. <laughs> you know, that's pretty good offense. Okay, let's see. We're in trouble. The Stanford team is. Stanford lost the handle. McCullough gets it back and puts it in. Good effort. Now the other change, I'm a little surprised that as Wooten's not guarding Brevin Knight. They got Booker on him, who's a little bit bigger, and Booker's going to try to bother Knight and play him hard without the ball. Booker, pretty good defender. Follow a young. Sand for the rebound. Here come the Huskies. Chance to tie or take the lead. Well, they're letting Tim Young handle McCullough all by himself, not really helping him too much. And McCullough just slipped by with a nice touch. Yes, he did. And, and uh, Tim's got to play a little bit better position. He overcommitted in that situation. And McCullough is very nifty inside. I mean, you give him the ball. And the other thing I love about McCullough, he never brings the ball down. He always keeps it above his shoulder so little guys can't come in there and knock it away. So Tim Young got out early and did well. And now it's McCullough. And we got Brevin Knight down. Come on, it's up. Oh, taking a shot to the head. Yeah, Brevin Knight, uh, as, you, as you look there, all of a sudden just went down away from the action. Got caught an errant elbow in the back of the head. He, I'll tell you what, though, they don't come tougher than 22. Now we get to look at it. Here he is on the. On the... I don't think I was intentional by Booker. It's hard to tell when the officials went right in front of the shot, but. Brevin will hang in there, take a standing eight count. And right back in the action, yeah, as you said. May take the challenge and score. He's in the end of the rebound, but he couldn't hold on to it. Luton picked it. And an errant pass. That's something the Huskies cannot afford. We're going to take a timeout. Bit of up-tempo game here. Todd McCullough has gotten the better of Tim Young in the last couple of minutes. We're tied at six. 50-53 remaining first half.
tied at six, 15-53 remaining. First half, it has been very much of an up-tempo game. And of course, when this guy's out there, uh, you could count on that kind of game. Although a very flat performance, despite it being a win on the road for Stanford at Pullman the other night. Well, Brevin uh, is a guy that will really pick up the tempo, and he's a press breaker. He's also somebody that, that can lead this team, and that's critical. You've got senior leadership, and that's that's hard to find in college basketball nowadays amongst the good teams. Nice overplay by the other big man, the other seven-footer, Patrick Femerly. Booker for three. Can't get the roll. You know what, McCullough and Femerly both play very aggressively. Now, McCullough on the bench and Femerly out there. And both of them are really uh, on the gas today. Well, and that's a real advantage for this team because you see McCullough sitting on the bench, but Bobby Bender's got 10 fouls to use in the post, so it's going to put a lot of pressure on, on Tim Young. He's got two seven-footers he has to contend with. Mark Sanford. And when Sanford's making that shot, that makes the rest of his game that much more effective. Well, you know, he's a young man, Barry, that plays so much better here at home than he does on the road. He has not been a great road player, but certainly a guy with multiple talent, and he can put it on the ground, he can shoot it outside, and he's a fine player, but he seems to really get it going when they play here uh, at Heckett. More complete player this year than he was last year, and will be even more so next year. Brevin Knight steps in, give it a sour off the glass. Brevin Knight, doesn't he make magnificent decisions? Fakes to Jay, penetrates, finds the open player. Boy, guys like that are really hard to find. Just a terrific all-around play by Brevin Knight. Summerlin down on the block. Nice look down low to Luton, but Arthur Lee right on the ground. Luton steps in over Young. And wins the rebound. Arthur Lee behind a sour screen. And these three, three guards out here are tough to handle for Stanford. Very quick, they can penetrate, they can score. Nice play that time by Fairman. Pole position. Don't leave your feet. That's the old verticality. Yeah, right? there, there it is. You saw the verticality. You're just standing with your hands up. And I think a good no call. We said this earlier. I think these officials will let both these teams play. Not a lot of fouls so far in the first half in a physical type game. Chris Weems had his shot blocked that, or blocked his shot rather. Tim Young down low from Sauer. He'll go to the line. Well, you talked about it. That's only the fourth foul in this ballgame. And, and I think a little bit of an advantage there for Stanford and Tim Young because uh, Washington has two big guys to play and Young a pivotal guy, and he'll play the majority of the minutes. This is great interior passing by Sauer. Th doesn't he make a very nice easy pass to his teammate Tim Young inside and Young brought the ball down a little bit but still was able to draw the foul. Substitutions for Stanford as uh, David Mosley comes into the ball game for the first time and Arthur Lee will leave. Mark Madsen preparing to come into the ball game. I suspect he may come in for the shooter, Tim Young. Yeah, he probably will. Uh, well, he, he, he in fact will, otherwise he'd be in the game. So if Young knocks this down, he'll come out and Madsen will come in. And Madsen, a guy also that has played exceptionally well. Look at those numbers, uh, 13 and eight on Thursday night uh, against the Cougs. So th that's, uh, that, that's critical. I think he's gonna be a special player before it's all done. Big hands, strong. If he gets his hands on a rebound, you're usually not gonna get it. Takes up a lot of space for a guy who's size. Man, he's bumping he and Femmerling are going to war inside. <laughs> the officials might have to call a foul there. They're gonna be interesting. They're gonna get a moving screen. Matson's a physical player. He's so what else is new? Well, that's right. always had physical no, that's right. What haven't they had a physical guy in there? That's Mike Montgomery. So he just recruited two finesse 611 guys for next year. That's right. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I never get 611, but they're not physical. They're only real good, and they can play outside and in. There's a travel call on Madsen. Talk about Mark Madsen. The coaches were telling us before the game that uh, he has a seven foot one inch reach. Well, that's how John Wooden used to measure guys. You know, they, it, it's not how big you are; it's your reach. You put your hand up over your head, and it's how far you go in that position. So guys with long arms have a terrific advantage in college basketball. That's Dion Loot. Good shooter in and out. Was halfway down. That's him with the rebound. Of course, both teams man to man. Brevin Knight just pulls up, tries the shot. Luton wisely lets it go out of bounds. It'll be the Huskies' ball. 
Pete Van Elswick will come into the Stanford lineup now. And Sauer will leave. Mike Montgomery will play a ton of guys. He'll go 10 or 11 deep. And uh, attrition was the problem the other night for the Huskies against California. They played hard and were in it. And then just didn't have it down the stretch. In fact, had a 14-point lead against California in that particular game. And uh, you know, the Bears are playing well. They're playing as well as anybody in the Pac-10 Conference. They in UCLA right now at the top of their games. I think they're in for sure. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit at halftime. Well, it's a very physical game. And Femerlein, uh, a big guy inside, Manson going for the ball, and Femerlein trying to establish position, but he's moving away from the ball, which hurts him. He has to get in there and come toward the ball and receive and score. Booker got a man in the air and then lost the handle. Then Ellsworth picks it up, and here comes Brevin Knight in the card. Knight penetrate to the basket, too hard off the glass, and Luke with a rebound. Thompson burns it for Sanford for the finish. Oh, what a great pass by Thompson. Sanford, an acrobatic catch and finish. I want to tell you, because he was out of the basket oh, yeah. when he caught the ball. I thought that pass was behind him. And Sanford just reached back. Well, you're comparing him to Jordan. Well, <laughs> well let's not OK, go once. <laughs> <laughs> he's got half of Jordan's number, and he's half as good. <laughs> take a time out watch this play and watch Sanford see how far he was under the basket still got back and finished tied at 10 11 50 left John Hancock trivia question of the day, and my partner Dan Bellwomany had this answer before I could get the question out of my mouth. Brevin Knight leads the Pac-10 in assists and steals. What two players finished the season leading in both categories? I'll tell you, they each did it more than once. What makes the great point guard vision? You always talk about that. Well, it sure does. Brevin Knight, he typifies that. He's a guy that can pass the ball, and he's more, really more dangerous on defense because he can steal it, and when he does, he can finalize plays. So Brevin Knight, a terrific all-around player, but I really think his defense so important to the success of the Stanford team. Now the answer for you in just a couple of minutes. Pop Hedger thought he got job there. He wanted to call, didn't get it. Huskies playing some solid defense here. Mosley off balance, can't get the roll back. Elswick call. Just have to do a little bit better job of blocking out, but uh, they are defending well, did a good job on the first shot. Now you need to clean it off the glass. That's where they really miss McCullough. Fairly not the rebounder that Todd McCullough is. I suspect he'll be back soon. Mark Sanford up front for three. Is he gonna miss one this afternoon? And yet, I, I don't remember, I don't think so. He <laughs> made every shot. In fact, four out of four. For, for Mark Sanford. So obviously continues that pace, Barry, be in pretty good shape. Yeah, I'd say so. No, nice little move on the base. That's what they love to do with Knight. See, Knight versatile. He can handle it, he can shoot it, and he can play without the ball and run around screens and then get shots off the of screen. So well, that's what you gotta like about Brett. I mean, he can score when needed. He can give it up when needed. He's an unselfish player. Femerling, uh, something that resembled a hook shot. Good job by Matson to push him a little further away from the goal. And Knight obviously feels he needs to score right now. He gets it back and has it blocked by Booker. That's a jump ball call, and the arrow will be Stanford's. Nice play by J.B. Booker. Booker's a great athlete. Yeah, yes, it is. And I thought this was an excellent call. Here's the move inside. And of course, Brevin Knight, I'm surprised he missed this one, an easy one from about four feet. But presence of mind to get it back. And I thought Booker elevated and did get leather. And it'll be a possession situation and out of bounds. It will go underneath to the Cardinal. 
Jamie Booker, we talk about what a great athlete he is, uh, could play football, has played football, and he's talking again about playing a little bit of football. There's a guy in the audience here I ran into before the game who uh, is interested in that, although he's not associated with the football program right now, but Don James is right here. Back, but it shouldn't be more than five off, huh? Right. Yeah, All right, 33. Okay. Talking about the clock here. We were talking about shooting a Sanford. In that He's the guy that's carrying the load offensively right yeah, now. Yeah, he really is because the rest of the team is two out of ten from the field. So Mark Sanford, four out of four, and he is carrying the load, and he's that kind of player. He, he's certainly a guy that's a, a depth from the outside, and he can run the floor well. So here's a guy that came out for the NBA draft, uh, thought he would get drafted, did not, and may have been the best thing for him because he realized that he needs some more time in college. That's what Bobby Bender feels. He says he came back a different player, uh, realized uh, not only what he could do, but maybe more important, what he couldn't do. And he's been working on that. Got Ben Elswick for a foul before the inbounds pass on Jamie Booker. Booker gave him a long look. Here's Bobby Bender, comes off uh, great success at Illinois State. And again, I firmly believe he'll get it going here before too long. I mean, he's doing pretty well right now. Yeah, they're having a good year. And uh, to make the NCAA tournament, they have five games remaining, including the game this afternoon. And I, I think definitely they got to win four of the five games. But uh, losing against California, Barry, on Thursday really hurt them. The Bears do an excellent job. And of course, they are in the NCAA tournament. Well, Ben Braun, his first year at Cal, and he took over late. And has really done a remarkable job with that team. I mean, there's a team of role players, and uh, they're all playing their role. Yeah, they are, and they're, and they're doing a real nice job of playing excellent team defense. Two now. California, of course, plays later on this afternoon, uh, cross state in Pullman. Jamie Booker at the free throw line for the Huskies. Rolls it in. Tied at 14. Fights to keep the rebound alive and banks it in. Oh, that's a situation with Van Ellswick. Just established position. Don't even go for the ball. McCullough, terrific hands and a very nice shooter. So when he receives and catches, he will score most of the time. It's Jackson, who was a starter, now coming off the bench, where Mike Montgomery feels he's more productive. And Brevin Knight misses again. Matson runs it down. Kick out for Knight. I think Knight may feel, Barry, that he has to look to score more with Tim Young out of the game. You know, he may feel, look, Young's not in the game, and he's a guy we'd go to. I may have to carry the load a little bit more than I would like, but he's that kind of player. He can do that. You look at the points in the field goal, certainly not a Brevin Knight kind of game, but I think he's in a situation where he feels he has to score. A little rough so far for him, as you saw those numbers. Deion Luton will come back into the Washington lineup, so too will Thompson. Chris Walcott also in the Washington lineup. So both coaches substituting liberally. I think Bob Bender probably substituting earlier this uh, today than he did Thursday night as Mosley sticks a three. Yeah, at first they didn't signal a three, but in fact it was, and, and now they do give him the three-point goal. Well, ben Ellswick has, has a tough, tough cover. He, he's going to be out here on Sanford, and that's going to be very difficult because Sanford can put it on the ground. He's very mobile. So Ben Ellswick has to do a good job of trying to keep the ball out of Mark Sanford's hands. He wants someone else to try to shoot the ball beside Sanford. So Ben Ellswick has it as a real tough job, and he has to dedicate himself to playing Mark Sanford as hard as he can when he does not have the basketball. Brevin Knight will uh, take a seat. And Arthur Lee replaces him, and Sanford is on fire. Well, and that's a situation where Van Ellswick, he just has to get up top of Sanford and try to face guard him and just do not let him touch. He has not missed a shot this afternoon. So Mark Sanford, near perfect. Sanford's got 11 points in the ball game. Good hands, almost a near steal. Thompson has to take care of it. Thompson, a guy that started earlier in the year, is now coming off the bench, but he can handle the ball. Nice pass inside. Good movement without the ball by Luton. Might have overpassed that one. Tried to get it behind his back to McCullough, who didn't expect the ball. 
Harper Lee took a shot. Took a shot both from a Washington player and then one of his own. There's Sanford again from Thompson. Well, Sanford is having quite an afternoon. I mean, you can't do it any better than what Mark Sanford's doing here against the Cardinal. I mean, he has just been perfect. Well, that was a scintillating play in the open court. Stanford doesn't have an answer right now. 13 right. of the first 20. See, you started comparing him with George. Yeah, that's it. See, that's what you, what's he going to do? Go out and get 40 this afternoon? <laughs> Substitutions for Stanford as Tim Young comes back into the ball game, and so does Pete Sauer. And watch Stanford run the floor as we go to break. Dogs by three. Don't go away. Coach, just another thing you always talk about, the ability to run the floor. Yeah, and finalize plays. And, and this is one thing Sanford can do well. I mean, th this is not by accident. Here, here's a young guy that has very good mobility, a good jumper, and look, look at that line. 13, six out of six, three rebounds, playing good defense. McCullough's got six, and Sanford's got 13, so they got 19 of the 20 between them. Pretty, pretty fair effort by the freshman Mosley going to the basket that time, kind of backhanded it in. I cannot remember, Barry, a year where you can take a guy like Brevin Knight out of the game, and Stanford still can hold her own, and that's the kind of depth that the Cardinal possesses. So that really bodes well for Stanford. Knight not in, but they're still hanging in there. And McCullough accepting the pass from Thompson and delivering. Well, you know McCullough's taking the challenge. I mean, he, uh, we, we talked about it earlier. Tim Young uh, outplayed him severely in the game at Maples, and McCullough wants to play well against the Cardinal and, and try to get a win up here. Mosley had a good look, missed a three-point shot, and then draws the foul. That's that's a freshman foul. The coaching staff at Stanford really likes David Mosley, though. They say... Uh, they feel that if their team does have any kind of an Achilles, it's a lack of toughness. And they said Mosley has some toughness. Yeah, and a good defender. He'll come out and play you hard, and he'll rebound the ball, and, and he'll get, he'll mix it up. <laughs> Luton starts to drive and is cut off, and I think they're going to get Mosley again here. Well, it's either Mosley or Young. They, they were both right under the goal. I'm not sure which one they got. It may have been Tim. If it is, to my recollection, that's a second foul on Young. So now you're in a situation, if, if you're the Huskies, I'm sure they'll try to put the ball down on the block to McCullough Moore. See, even though Young got off to a good start in terms of blocking some shots, he picked up the foul, and McCullough now is wearing him down a little bit, and he's starting to get the ball, and now Young's got to play him differently. Young cannot be as aggressive with the two fouls. McCullough's out quicking him down there, too. When he gets his hands on the ball, he's very quick. Well, well here's a guy, McCullough, uh, second in the nation in field goal percentage. So he, yeah, Jelani McCoy was shooting, what, near 79%. Now, whether he has enough attempts to qualify in terms of leading the country, uh, I'm not sure, but he is shooting at 79. McCullough is shooting, well, he's shooting in the 70s himself. So, you know, that's a that's a good guy to get the ball to if you got somebody shooting about 70% from the, from the field. And as you said, he doesn't bring the ball down, and that's just one of the cardinal things for a big man. Pete Sauer with good hands. And quietly having a nice game this afternoon. Sauer's effective in the low block, passing the ball, and, and doing a very good job for Stanford. All right, let, let's see if they bring it to McCullough. Now, Young's got two fouls. Throw the ball down to McCullough. We'll back it up and look for the big guy inside. Walcott in trouble with his back to the basket. And... It may have been off Stanford. Sauer may have deflected the ball out of bounds. And Mosley leaves and Brevin Knight comes back into the ball game. And Chris Weems comes with him. That's an interesting substitution to take McCullough out when, when Young picks up the two fouls. I, uh, I'm sure Femmerling, very, very good offensive player in his own right. And, and they may want to bounce the ball to Femmerling and let him use his dribble and try to pick up that third foul. Now, see if he go toward the man, take it toward the basket. Well, I think that's the idea. That's a little mystifying. What you want to do there is just take it in and try to draw that third foul. But Femmerling is a guy who plays better facing the basket. So it seems like, uh, conceptually, it seems like a good idea. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we're here yes. blathering. That's and, uh, exactly right. <laughs> Seems like a good idea. Yes. 
Take it in. Kick it out to Booker and Weems with fast hands. Femmerling runs it down. Femmerling on the German junior national team played the three small forwards. Well, that's the way it is in Europe. You're 6'11, you play outside. You got to be 7'6 to play the post. All right, Revan Knight just picked Thompson's pocket to the basket. And Thompson is hurt. I think he might have jammed a finger. He picked his pocket, and I think he had his hand in his pocket. <laughs> well, Thompson, a tough guy, and, and he's a young man, as we said earlier, is someone who has started uh, earlier in the year. And here we talked about Brevin Knight, that he leads the conference in steals and assists, and here's one of the reasons why. I mean, he just, and unfortunately, he, he may have hurt Thompson in that particular steal effort, but but a nice uh, a nice move by Brevin Knight to score. And that, that's a situation that you just can ill afford to lose the ball. You have to take care of it in the midcourt area. Any steal results in an easy score for the opposition. And Brevin going right back after Jan Wooten. Wooten and Knight, let me tell you, it's, it's an ego battle. Wooten, the guy that played against Knight and Stefan Marbury in high school, so he's played against uh, the best. Elizabeth, New Jersey, and Orange, New Jersey, far away from one another. Sanford off the inbounds pass. I don't think they'll get in that basket, but they will put him on the line. Well, that was a beautiful pass and a look by Booker. I mean, a simple out of bounds play, and that's why when you're playing defense against someone like Sanford, and when you're playing defense against anybody, you better have vision on the ball and vision on your man. If you don't have vision on the ball and you play with your back to the ball, that's what happens. You just lob it right over your head, and the offensive player has an easy play to make. Mark Sanford, not a bad free throw shooter, 72%. Gives his team a two-point lead. Five points, the biggest lead of the ball game so far. That by Washington. I guess Mark doesn't intend on missing this afternoon. I guess he, he just thinks, oh, that's one of those days where I think, I'll just make every shot. And he is that kind of player, too. As long as he's playing confidently, and, and you pointed out earlier how well he plays here in Seattle. Tim Young facing up. Nice touch. Uh, he, he can do that. that. That's one of the things Tim Young brings to the table. Very good facing the basket basket player. He's somebody who can make the 15-footer, good with his back to the basket, but a terrific all-around player. And a guy that's been injured. He's got the bad back, and he's he's not at 100%, but he's given uh, the Cardinal a good effort. Featherman has to make himself available. Call for the ball. Wooten with eight seconds on the shot clock. Fall away, goes down. Well, we thought this might be a high-level game. It's certainly a must-win for the Huskies, and it would be, a, obviously, a tremendous road trip for the Cardinal to come up and win two up here in the Northwest. And, well, just the way the game has been going for Washington, McCullough has, does not have a foul, to the best of my recollection. He may have won on the bench. They're saving him. He's a guy who uh, cannot take a whole lot of trips up and down the floor without puffing a little bit, so he's not being used up here in the first half. He should be a factor in the second half. Over to Budwich, his team leads by three. Yeah, you would think the Huskies in, in good shape, and uh, if Bob Bender had to draw it up a game plan before, this is the one he would like. Two fouls on Young, and, and his big guys are not in foul trouble, and he's resting in and they're right in the ball game. I, I also think tempo favors the Huskies. See if they find Sanford again. Well, instead, they go the other way to Booker, but it's fast handed out of bounds by guess who? That man right there. Yeah, Brevin Knight saves you in so many different ways. You don't even notice it. Makes a tremendous steal just to knock it out of bounds. 28-25 ball game, 343 remaining first half, and we'll be back.
Just a reminder to stay with us at halftime. We'll have an inside look at this year's prospective NCAA All-Americans with the John Wooden Award player profile. We're spotlighting the man we're watching today, Revan Knight. The Los Angeles Athletic Club's John Wooden Award is presented by Euro Health Systems. We're going to talk a little bit about who's going to do what come March and who's going to the dance, who's staying home, especially as it concerns the Pac-10 Conference, bring update on women's hoops around the conference and highlights and stats. For the first half, took me longer to promo it than it will to that do was, it. That, you did a beautiful job, too. You stayed right with that. You were focused. I was very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. I executed my game plan near perfectly. Arthur Lee for three. Very confident Stanford team. They, they'd uh, run through a little adversity here in the first half, but they've done a nice job of hanging in there. They're making some critical shots. Brevin Knight, a little bit more comfortable now directing the team, not thinking he has to score as, he, as much as he did earlier in the half. And, and that's really his game. And I gave Arthur Lee a three. It was a two. He had a split of the line. So it's a 28-27 ball game. Huskies. Might want to let Tim Young touch it if they can get the ball down to Young and let him work. Give, give him the ball in there and see what he can do. Boy, I love that pass, Barry. It, the ball did not go in, but it was a beautiful look by Tim Young. That, that's the other thing that Tim Young brings to the table, a guy that can pass from the low post. He can start inside, look for the three-point shooter on the outside, find people, and make the easy pass. Well, Tim Young will uh, take a seat alongside Keith Larson. And he may be there for the rest of the half. He's got the two fouls. No sense that Tim Young picking up that third foul in the first half. So I'd be surprised if Tim, Tim Young re-entered the game uh, in, in the first half. Kemmerling down low, over Seaton. Well, Kemmerling can do that. He, he is very active. And when he does receive inside, he has the ability for, to make that little turnaround, and he can also put it on the ground. He's another guy with long arms, too. Now, he and Todd McCullough both seven-footers, but Femmerling, uh, in terms of height, a reach gives you more. And they may play both of those guys together. Don't be surprised if you see Femmerling and McCullough out there at some point. Chris Williams penetrates, and Mark Sanford, the rebound, the outlet to Booker, who controls it nicely like a defensive back. Got it to Dion Luton, who just forgot to take the ball with him to the basket. Well, they did everything perfect, just couldn't finish. Chris Weems lets a man go by, missed the three. And Booker again with the rebound. Well, Booker is another one of those guys like Revan Knight, does all those little things that don't necessarily show up. Got a foul on Sauer, reaching in. And again, that's something that Booker created. Well, I, I told you that this, this crew would let him play because now we're at the one and one and we're a minute and 38 left in the half. So, and then finally got to the seventh team foul. You look at a line on, on McCullough. Really, it's been Todd McCullough and Mark Sanford have, have done the, uh, the major scoring load here in the first half for the Huskies. They, they're gonna need somebody else to pick it up. I mean, you can't expect two guys to, to continually score every time down the floor. Oh, he didn't Sam, Sanford miss one. one. There's an upset, and he missed the layup. First That's the one. easiest shot he's had. Did a good job to get the rebound, too. Chris Williams too hard. Mark Seaton follows. Well, that's what happens when you break the defense down with you dribble. All of a sudden, guards dribble the ball, they go to the basket, the center comes over to help, and when the shots miss, the big guys have a chance to follow it in. Try to go lob again, and they're gonna get sour underneath. And, and I'm not sure that play was gonna be completed. But I thought a good call because uh, certainly Sanford uh, was altered in the air. Here again, they love the lob to Mark Sanford because he can make plays. And there was the push while Sanford was in the air. So that's the third foul on Sauer. And it'll be a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Mark Sanford. Mike Montgomery doesn't like the call. Are they going to say it was a two-shot foul? Well, that's interesting because he never touched the ball. No, I mean, you would think he had to be in the act of shooting with the ball. Oh, it's a tenth. It's a tenth team foul. There you go. Uh, it's it's the it's situation where here, of course, that the foul occurred while he was in the air, but you're in a double bonus. So in a double bonus, you get two. Thank you, Barry. Alert as always. My part. I am the One out of two for Sanford. 
He's got 16 in the ball game, and McCullough with 10. That's, that only leaves five. No, that, that, that's right. And the fact is, I think if you're Mike Montgomery, and you can go in at half, one, two down, you're not totally unhappy because your big guy's got two fouls. And, and uh, I think uh, Washington has played exceptionally well here in the first half. Well, there was a carry that didn't get called, and Weems makes the basket. Sure looked like he turned it over, didn't it? Yeah, it looked like uh, he, he may have carried it a bit, but uh, no call. Close. you got to keep playing. You can't stop. Play the whistle. Be a good time to get Sanford back involved here if you can get him the ball. Well, because you got to guard the ball. And Stanford now, we're in great shape. I mean, uh, Mike Montgomery's saying, look, I got Young on the bench. McCullough and Sanford have had monstrous first halves. We got a chance for the last shot in the league. Well, I'm certainly going to run this down and let uh, Brevin Knight do a little pick and roll at the top and try to shoot it with about four seconds to go. Got it back to Pete Sauer, who shoots it. Can't get the three, and Luton with a rebound. Two seconds, still got time. Get it ahead to Booker. That won't count, will not count. And the first half comes to an end, a very entertaining first half of basketball. We are tied at 31 between Stanford and Washington. Halftime activities coming up right after this. Barry Tompkins, Dan Belamity back at Heck Ed. Cardinal and the Huskies tied at 31. 20 minutes of basketball remaining. And uh, for the Washington Huskies, uh, it was the running of the floor of Mark Sanford. You heard of the running of the Bulls? It's the running of the floor. <laughs> it, it is the running of the floor. And Sanford did this more than once. A, a very nice pass and a finish by, by Mark Sanford. He had a terrific first half. Ian McCullough dominated the first half for the Huskies. So you look at the first half scoring and really only two guys now for Washington to win this game I mean somebody's going to have to pick it up they're going to need some guard production from either Booker or Wooten in the second half if they're going to defeat Stanford yeah Sanford and McCullough 10 to 13 combined everybody else on the team two of 11. The big guy Tim Young a creditable performance in the first half but I would think Mike Montgomery would probably want a little more from him. Yeah and I tell you what Mike's happy about that Young did pick up that third foul so Young makes some outside shots but a more balanced attack for the Cardinal, and they had the advantage in terms of bench strength, so they've got some guys coming off that did a nice job for them. And significantly, Brevin Knight in the first half, two of seven, just four points, did not get to the free throw line. Stanford, in fact, only got to the free throw line twice, and that's very much a key for the Washington Huskies. So the game is there for both these teams. We're tied at 31. Don't go away, we're coming back. Tied at 31 as we await the start of the second half between Stanford and Washington. Let's take a look at some of the numbers at the end of the first 20 minutes of play. And uh, both teams shot the ball relatively well. Washington a little bit better than Stanford. But as we said, it was the two guys who carried the bulk of that scoring. Ten of Washington's 12 field goals coming from McCullough and Sanford. Either team shooting it well beyond the arc. And uh, free throw department, Stanford didn't get there often, but they made what they did get. And the rebounding, uh, a little edge to either team, really. Yeah, I think the key there is Stanford didn't get the free throw line. And here's a team shooting 75% as a club. And I think Stanford to win this game will have to put the ball down on the block and get the Huskies in some foul trouble and get to the line. They have to shoot more than two in the second half if they're going to win it. Well, you talked about somebody having to step up to help out uh, McCullough and Sanford. Donald Watts not able to do that. And as you see, that's almost 10 points a game that is out of the lineup and in street clothes. So somebody here is going to have to step up. Yeah, and they miss Watts. And there's, there's his dad, Slick Watts. And, uh, of course, Slick, a, a terrific player for the Seattle Supersonics and uh, here at all the games. So uh, they do miss Watts, and, and that's a very good point because you notice that not much guard production from the Huskies. And when they get guard production, Barry, they're a tough 
to beat, and that, that's been their problem. Sanford normally plays well. McCullough will do a good job. Booker will step up on occasions, but they need Wooten to come up big in the second half. I, I think he's a key guy for Washington. Well, Booker had 19 in the loss to California the other night. He's got one in this ball game. Deion Luton, a guy who can score and score quickly. And all you have to do is look back at his first collegiate performance against BYU earlier this year when he was 22 points in 20 minutes. That's just a great move by McCullough. It's not the first time we've seen it. And a very smart move by Bob Bender. Let's come out and attack Young, who has the two fouls. Uh, Tim, not quite as aggressive as he was at the start of the game. And, and that's a very sound basketball move by Washington coming out to start the second half. Stanford starting Mark Matson at the beginning of the second half as Arthur Lee gets the shot. Booker high for the rebound. And I'm sure that's designed to help Young out. See if they go right back. Well, now they're going to open it up on the outside. I think you set it up as you're Washington again and find out where Young, whom Young is guarding, which is McCullough, and bring the ball to Todd and let him at least let him touch it. Of course, when he touches it, he normally scores. It's a guy that does not get a lot of assists. He, he will normally get it in the air when he receives. I think go right back to it. The right hander and the foul. Couldn't have worked out better for Bob Bender. Not normally a situation where you will foul a man because McCullough was not going toward the basket. Here's a situation where Young has to back off a bit. He does a good call. He did foul him on the arm on the shot, and McCullough makes a very nice shot. So third foul on Tim Young. Now Mike Montgomery's in a situation. Do I leave him in? Do I take him out? I suspect he will leave him in for a bit to, just to see how Young reacts. But uh, I wouldn't. I don't think he's going to leave him in too long. Pretty savvy move by McCullough too. He didn't turn and go the same way he did. Instead, he shot almost a little fall away. Young missed the left hand hook, and here come the Huskies, and they'll push it three on three. And now Sanford will wait for help. Goes lob instead to Booker, and it's the bottom of the backboard. And here is the longest rebound you'll ever yeah. see Todd McCullough get. Yeah, that credit him with a rebound. He got it near half court. Kind of slams off the glass. Now they're going to go back to him again. Boy, they are just executing perfectly to start the second half. I mean, get it to the big guy. The person that's guarding you is in foul trouble, and all of a sudden, you just get it inside, and you score. McCullough has hit his last seven attempts. Maybe they don't need help from anybody else. Well, maybe they don't. <laughs> yeah, it was Sanford in the first half, and McCullough in the second. He's got a whistle away from the ball here. And they got McCullough. Well, that's why this big guy right here is shooting about 70%. Young tries to flop and pick up the foul, and I think a good no call in that situation and a good turn and a finish by Todd McCullough. Keeps the ball, very soft hands, and a very adept shooter inside. Look at the difference between January 23rd and today. Young has it stripped from behind, but Matson picks it back up, missed the shot. McCullough gets another rebound. Oh, he is defending, rebounding, and holding position inside. And he's really giving this Husky team a lift. Playing a lot tougher than I've seen him play, too. There's Luton with a fortuitous bounce to McCullough. Missed the shot, got it back, gets the follow. He's lighting it up here. Yeah, and I think Mike Montgomery needs a timeout right now. Because what's unfolding is that his guys are not aggressive on the glass. They're playing in a situation where they don't want to foul, and Washington's just dominating the boards. Well, McCullough is just a different guy, certainly than I've seen him. Now, you've seen him a little bit more than I have and uh, and have seen him in some shining moments. I haven't until today. But look at the hands on McCullough. You notice again, he never brings the ball down. I mean, he's a guy that keeps it up, keeps it up, taps it, and has beautiful hands, and makes a terrific finish. And he's been waiting for this for a long time. Has not played particularly well against Tim Young. Wanted to have a good game this afternoon. And you look at the numbers, and he is having a good game. Yeah, you could almost make a case for his Todd McCullough goes, so go the Huskies. And look at these in the 14 wins. Look at the numbers. And in the eight losses, look at the numbers. And I, I mean, I don't even have to say anything else. Oh, it's a team that, that uh, is perplexing in, in a sense because they play so well here in Seattle but have a difficult time when they get away from this building. You look at the numbers, and Stanford needs a productive trip down the floor. 0 for 4 to start the second half. So they need to execute. They've got Young out of the game. They're going to try to run. This is a time where Brennan Knight may have to step up. Arthur Lee blocked by McCullough. And McCullough dominating the game so far. He's got 18 and 5. And Tim Young with six and two, so that bodes well for for the uh, for the Huskies. And the most important number is the three that Tim Young has, three fouls. All right, this is a very experienced Stanford team with this young guy right here with the ball. So he, he can get you back in a hurry 
That's a shot he will normally put down. I mean, he had a good look at the goal and more upset at himself. I mean, they did not jump out on him. That's a shot he normally makes. Two of eight so far tonight, today, I should say. And that's maybe why they're not stepping out. They're going to tell Brevin, okay, we're going to give you that shot. We don't want to guard you close because you, you cause more trouble going by us. So we're going to find out if you can make that perimeter shot. Yeah, Luton kick out. Luton is open. And it's the old combination of Luton and Wooten. Boy, I, and I know that one well. Luton on the inside gives it up to Wooten for a J. And the crowd is rooting. Stanford still on 31, so this has been a an 11 zip run by the Huskies. They start in the second half. They're, they're letting them go inside. Incidental contact is not called in this game. And it's that's kinda, good. Yeah, it's kind of like a Big Ten game. Brevin Knight can't get that one to go either, and McCullough finally pulls another rebound down. Brevin tries to sneak in and grab it. He's still battling him, and McCullough won the battle. Wooden again for three. Couldn't get the roll. Wooten again. And he got that call, and Wooten very upset with himself. Good right hook to the uh, to the post, unfortunately. Uh, doesn't count in this sport. No. Y you will not knock down the post, that's for sure. Well, Wooten it, it makes the outside shot, then misses one. And look at him. Has a, a tenacious effort to get it back and then creates the foul and then with the right hand on the post. Now, thank goodness it's padded. He, he missed that too, I think, actually. It was <laughs> he a little did, wide on it. that one also. Todd McCullough left to a standing O. Well, you said in the first half that they rested McCullough and it's paid off for, uh, for Bobby Bender. I mean, the big guys come out and have a magnificent second half so far, and that's because of the rest he received in the first half. Very flat beginning for Stanford in the second half, and the Huskies going the other way. Lee stepped in, tried to get it to Matson. Lee picks it back up, dished to Matson, stolen by Wooten. Well, Wooten's confidence level way up. Oh, look at him, just penetrating down, just trying to take it over. It's a nice play by Wooten, and he's responding. But I think Booker is telling him, take it easy, play within yourself here. Arthur Lee will leave, and uh, Mike Montgomery, you can just tell by his substitution pattern, is just looking for five guys that complement each yeah, other. Yeah, he's trying there. to find a combination is, is exactly what he's doing. Remember, remember this, that, that Washington had a 14-point lead against California. Now, that wasn't the, fir the first half. The Bears came back and won that game. So the Huskies, as you said, Let's not get carried away. Let's remember how we got this lead. Set your schemes, run your formations, get the ball inside, and make solid judgment calls. Well, they've come out of the blocks quickly here in the second half. They've scored the first 12. Stanford's still on 31, and there's the guy who's really gotten it done. Right now, he's sitting alongside Bob Bender. We're coming back. Well, how'd you do on the John Hancock trivia question? I know my partner Dan got it. Brevin Knight leading in the Pac-10 Conference in assists and steals. Which two players finished the season leading in both categories? Yeah, more than once. Gary Payton three times, Jason Kidd twice. Well, Jason only twice because he only played in the league two years. That's true. <laughs> he would have done it every year had he played more. Well, that's a good timeout. I mean, I mean, finally, an execution. You run your motion. Weems comes off a screen, gets a good look, squares his shoulders, and a much-needed score for the Cardinals. Big basket. Last seven minutes prior to that, Washington on a 16-4 run, and, of course, out of block with a 12-0 run here in the second half. Femmerlin is fouled by Matson. Terrific size advantage inside for the Huskies, and that's what that's what they're doing. They're attacking the low block. So Matson over on the side, trying to give some help. 
but uh, a terrific advantage inside for Femerlin. So I'm sure Washington is going to look back to Femerlin again inside. And I think they got Brevin Knight rather than Matson reaching in. I think they did. I think Knight came from the weak side, and he's the one that created the foul. Now, again, you look for now this big guy can pass, and he's pretty adept in there. Oh, out! A little high off the board. That was off the clock. Now, see, that ball was blocked. That should still remain Washington basketball. The and, ball was definitely deflected. And Bob Garibaldi right on it. <laughs> they firmly wanted a foul call, but I don't think there was any contact. They're going to bring it back to the ball again. Well, I Mosley, this little touch foul on Luke. I think Madsen is better served to move Femerlin off the block if he can a few feet and play behind. Because every time he gets over on the side he, and, and Washington makes that simple entry pass, the big guy's going to turn it in for an easy score. Cole is sitting on the bench, so you know he's a much better back-to-the-basket player than Femerlin. So you don't give Femerlin quite as much respect inside as you would McCullough. Luton for three, yes! And he is a streak shooter, folks, if he gets it going. This is short. Look at the rebound. Stanford's just getting one shot. Yeah, it's, yep. it's one and out for the Cardinal. Not many second efforts at all. And the Huskies really controlling the tempo of this game. They're doing a nice job putting touches on it, getting quality shots, and they have traveled there. See, so that's the kind of thing you can ill afford to do. Don't give Stanford an opportunity to get back. You have to get shots when you're in, in the half court. Bob Bender, of course, has to like the way his team has come out in the second half and responded. And they have shut this man down pretty well. Not that man, although they've shut him down too. But they've shut Brevin Knight down. And you know, you're not going to shut him down for 40 minutes. That's just a fact. Mosley missed the three. So best you jump on him while you can. But Stanford is done here in the second half. But that's, that's not going to win you a lot of games. No, one out of 10 won't do it. Got himself in the air and then got the lucky bounce back to him. Sanford pulls up missed. Right back to Luton. That's a, not a good shot by Luton. You, you have the lead. Back it out. Set your offense again. That's two or three quick shots by the Huskies. But at least Booker had put a good look. I don't mind the second one. I thought the first one, though, give your big guys a chance. Good pump fake inside. That, that's what you do. Get the big guys in the air. Matson drew Femerling, got him up, and then Femerling came right down on him. That's a good look again by Knight. Beautiful pass. And then when you're playing against a bigger man, sometimes you want to use the pump fake, get him in the air, and then try to go ahead and try to score and draw the foul. Hey, we got two, fellas. Mark, tough guy. Runs in the family. His brother Josh, a defensive back at Stanford, starter, and a pretty darn good player this year, too. Got that baby face, but don't let it uh, fool you. Well, he's got a tough job on his hands, but really at the defensive end of the floor. Femmeling's over the line if uh, if Matson missed that shot. Femmeling went over that time, but Matson didn't need the extra throw. He made he got it down. So it gives Stanford a little bit of a little bit of hope to come back, get it within 10, but they're gonna have to put some stops at this end of the floor, pick up their defense and defend the low block a little bit better. Good defense there by Mosley. Mosley, good defender for freshman. What I like about Mosley is aggressive. He'll come out after. Oh! Revan Knight counted oh, and how, one. How did he do that? How, how did he make that shot? I mean, against a seven-footer, he brought it in and just shot it to the sky. A kind of a rainbow fingertip roll by Brevin Knight. Boy, he felt the contact and just let it go straight up and, and did a real nice job. Kind of looked at Fairmoline and said, you know, I could do that again if you let me. <laughs> he is an intense competitor. And Tom McCullough will come back into the lineup as uh, you talked about stops. Bob Bender wants to get a stop now. Well, he has done a beautiful, Bob has done a beautiful job of substituting for, for his big people. Uh, now he's got a real fresh Todd McCullough. Get him back in the game. And, and I'm sure try to 
get Todd the basketball right down the floor. That's what worked at the start of the half, so you want to go right back to the things that were effective. Brevin Knight's getting testy now. He's talking. The Brevin doesn't like to lose. I can tell you that. I mean, he's a competitive young guy, and he, he's going to try to turn this game around by himself. He's got fire in the eye right now. Booker. And Seaton runs it down. Now the Cardinal with an opportunity here. They trail by seven. They have the ball, and they have it in the hands of the man they want to have. Brevin Knight missed a shot. Weems steps in, give it a seat and underneath over McCullough and the foul on McCullough. Good interior passing by the Cardinal. This is an experienced Stanford team that will not fold under the pressure. McCullough picks up his second. Good effort that time by the Cardinal to set their offense and put the ball right near the goal. And Bob Bender wants a timeout, and, and you really sense the tenor of this game ever so slightly starting to turn toward the guys in the Cardinal. 46-39, Washington leads at 12.03 remaining. Don't go away. What's happening 46 39 Huskies at the first 12 points of the second half they've gone a little bit quiet now and I really feel Dan that right where we are now is a very pivotal point in this ball game yeah it really is now remember this and Bob Bender's thinking about it we had a 14 point lead against California we lost the game we did not control the tempo we started the second half by putting it down on the block we got easy shots and then we got away from it then all of a sudden we said, well, look, we'll start shooting some threes. And it gave Stanford an opportunity to come back. And the Cardinal very solid in the last three or four possessions. So I think Washington go back to what was successful. Let McCullough touch the ball at the offensive end. Also, Mark Sanford had a lot of touches in the second half. No, and listen, without those two guys, you're in trouble. So if you're Washington, let's go back to Sanford or McCullough. And Tim Young still on the bench, so Madsen trying to do what he can to McCullough. He's trying to deny him the ball. He's fronting him. Yeah, doing a good job playing right in front. You have to work a little hard. Maybe enter the ball from the top of the key, get into that mid-court area where the defense can't give much help. Shot clock down to about four. They finally get it to McCullough. Mosley steps in front, and Booker steals it. Fortuitous, but the Huskies will take it. Yeah, absolutely. They, they needed they needed a score, and Stanford did a good job at the defensive end. Unfortunate on the bounce, but uh, the Huskies needed to come back and, and get a quick one. Brevin Knight give it to Seaton. Seaton double clutched and double clutch with the feet also. Good look by Knight. And what you have to do when you play with Brevin Knight, I got to tell you, got to get your hands ready all the time because he surprised Seaton with the pass. 48 to 40, 11 10 remaining in the ball game. We're coming back. Well, here's the guy who is going to have to pull the trigger for the Stanford Cardinal if they're going to get it done. They trail by eight with 11-10 remaining in the ball game, and Brevin not having his greatest hour as a shooter. No, but you, you know the, the the great thing about Knight is he's he's three out of 12 from the floor. He has not made a turnover in this game, and he has five assists. So he, he does the other things well, even though he's not having a great shooting game. But I'll tell you what, if it comes down to it, and you need one shot, I'd just soon have the ball in his oh, hands. Sure. He'll make something happen. Now, let's see if the Huskies can get it to McCullough. Now, they do a much better job that time. I think every time they take a timeout, Bob Bender can remind them, hey, guys, listen, we're ahead, we're not behind. Well, and you always talk about you have to be productive coming out of a timeout, and that, I think, says something about that guy right there. Yeah, and no, I'm sure Bobby told his guys, look, uh, let's get it back to McCullough. Even though he didn't score, he touched the ball, and, and it forces, uh, put some pressure on the defense. McCullough, turn around, won't go. Rebound down to Sauer, reach in on Walcott. Yeah, the Cardinals are very in a precarious situation. You've got Sauer out there with the three fouls. And, and let's face it, he has not played a lot in the second half because of the fouls. Mike Montgomery could, could not get him in. And Sauer was very effective in the first half, gave him some inside scoring. And now you got Young with three. So it's going to be an uphill battle for, for, for the Cardinals. Brevin Knight for three. Throwing him up there, Stanford with the rebound. Yeah. 
Swalcott, a guy who uh, Bob Bender says great performer in practice. He's just not been able to translate it into game conditions quite yet, but he likes it. Yeah, he likes it. He's a guy, he's a lefty who can shoot the ball, and he played very well against Arizona when they beat Arizona here. And uh, Walcott uh, was a contributing factor in that game and really earned some more playing time because of it. And Walcott reached over the top. Bob Bender not happy with that. Bonus situation now one and one. No, he's not happy with it for, for a couple of reasons because he knows you, you don't want to get into a free throw shooting contest with Stanford. They're, they're about a 75% free throw shooting team. So uh, Walcott picks up the foul, and th this is tough on a young guy. You, you miss a shot, you create a foul, and you come out of the game. <laughs> That's normally the scenario, but while you're running out, you just got to keep your head up, sit down, and get a little coaching, and then uh, next opportunity, uh, uh, try to do well. Eric Hughes with his arm around him, just trying to settle this player down. He's saying, look, coach, I had the shot. I was open. <laughs> and Eric's probably telling him, look, look, we, we don't want you to do that. We want yeah. you to get the ball to the... See, we got Sanford and McCullough. Those are the guys that score. <laughs> Believe me, that's the kind of scenario that goes on. Booker will back it out with 15 seconds on the shot clock. And Matson's done a good job on McCullough. To give Matson some credit, he's kept the ball on McCullough's hands on this sequence, forced someone else to shoot it. Booker, the leader. Oh, tough shot. Oh, that was a terrific acrobatic shot by Booker. Used a little of the clock, and that's exactly what you want. And he used the whole rim. <laughs> it's like about many, a, many times. And he does like a, it's like a spinner shot, about a three rimmer and a drop. Weems, tough shot in traffic. And I, I don't think that's a shot that Mike Montgomery would have particularly wanted. Well, Bob trying to direct him out there. He's yelling and screaming. Probably say, look, dude, this is a play for McCullough or Sanford. Got it, guys? Big guy, throw it in there. And they got Sanford backing down on him. And, and, you know, there's no reason why you cannot throw it over the top when the big guy is open. This is Booker's shot. Now, he, he makes it, look at this, an acrobatic roll, roll, spin, spin. Booker saying, stay in there, don't spin out. And it did, and uh, Matson has picked up his fourth personal foul, and so Stanford in a heap of foul trouble here, and uh, they haven't yet found an answer for McCullough. Matson, I thought, did it as well as anybody. Nothing else was going to get a shot at him. And he did. Matson did, did a very good job. He picked up some fouls and they're going to go right back into it. Right and, and the thing you cannot forget to do is when is when McCullough misses a shot, which isn't too often, by the way, screen him out. Get in position so he doesn't get it back. McCullough now has 20 points. That's his fifth 20 point game this year. open this time. Well, Brevin's just having a tough afternoon. He can't get anything down. You, you know, it, it's interesting, Dan, I don't mean to interrupt you, but it, when Stanford was out here shooting the ball around a little bit before the game, actually before their formal warm-ups, Brevin Knight looked at that basket that he just missed that and said, you know, this basket is a couple of inches higher than the other basket. And sure enough, they came out, measured the baskets, and Brevin was right. Now he's shooting it two inches shorter. Well, Brevin's just having one of those afternoons, and in the meantime, again, McCullough got him back on track, and then all of a sudden, Sanford, who had been quiet, knocks down a three. Yeah, Sanford with five double-doubles on the season, so he's, he's a guy that can rebound the ball and, and, of course, a prolific scorer. And again, Bob Bender, he likes calling these plays. See, I mean, they're just dictating the tempo in a half court. This is not a Washington team that wants to get the score in the 80s and the 90s. They, they want to keep it in the 60s and the 70s, and, and they're a little bit more comfortable. Got Van Ellswick on a grab, and, and Stanford just does not have an answer today for Todd McCullough. That clearly is the difference in the game. I mean, you expect, I think, the kind of performance that Mark Sanford has given them. That's, that's pretty much consistent, especially here in Seattle. But what McCullough has given them today is something that has been sometimes there and sometimes not. Today it is. And, they, and he doesn't really have a, and in my opinion, a healthy Tim Young to go against. And this is not an excuse for Tim, but he's had a bad back. He's had some problems. And let's face it, if he were 100%, he'd be in the game right now because he's a guy that can defend. Oh, Booker with a great rebound off the missed free throw, but he couldn't convert. And here come the Cardinal, two on three. Knight, kick out Lee, pump fake, shot. 
and Stanford will hang in there. I mean, you've got a comfortable lead if, if you're the Huskies. You're, you lead by 10, but don't get complacent. You, you have to continually remind everybody to stay focused in the game and set your half-court offense and make sure you get attempts every time down. No turnovers. And Bob Bender called a set play again. Number four, whatever that might be. Well, I would guess it's McCullough or Sanford. I would say. It doesn't yes. matter what number you put up, it ends up in those two guys' hands. I think that's exactly three right. Three is the same as four, and one is the same as three. Instead, it's Wooten from three-point range, and he got it. Well, it's all going down. Well, we're wrong again. And Bob's going that No, no, okay, forget it. Yeah, I like it. I'll guarantee you, that wasn't either one, three, or four. <laughs> there were no fingers involved in that. Elsewhere, he can shoot that. Well, there's still plenty of time for the card. I mean, an 11 point lead in college basketball can evaporate in a minute and a half. So you just have to continually control the game. And they got Knight. A little bit over aggressive. He did get some of the orange, but he got quite a lot of Wooten as well. Wooten doing a nice job against his uh, New Jersey rival. Well, I, you know, we thought, we talked about it at halftime. I thought for, the, for Washington to win this game, guard production was critical. I thought Wooten was the key guy. And he has controlled the ball. He has not turned it over. He's made some big threes. And he's been a pivotal factor in the success of Washington, especially in the second half. Well, you talked at halftime of the fact that the Huskies needed somebody to step up beyond McCullough and Sanford, and, and I think Wooten has really done that. Yeah, he, really he really has, and uh, congratulations uh, to Wooten. The game's not over yet, obviously, but he's done a nice job so far in the second half. And that was John Wooten and not Dion Wooten at the free throw line. And we had a lane violation. Well, you know things are not going right when all of a sudden you start getting lane violations with uh, under uh, seven minutes to go in the game. You finally get a miss at the line, and uh, you're going to give them another opportunity. And of course, they're going to make the most of it. And with that, we'll take a timeout. 6.30 remaining in the ball game, and it's looking better for the home team and worse for the visitors from Palo Alto. Don't go away. We're coming back. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the University of Washington. I should have her read this, you know that? And the Pac-10 Conference, it is intended solely for the non commercial Do you care about this? Use of our audience and may not be rebroadcast in any form without the express, I mind you, express written consent, University of Washington and the Pac-10 Conference. Luton with a steal, gets it ahead to Booker to the basket. Well, they may, they may get a technical foul for hanging on the rim. Bill Kennedy made the call, and let's see what he called. Now he called Brevin Knight for the foul. Well, again, a good steal, and uh, Booker's going to take this. But now, he de definitely gets fouled on the shot attempt. And then someone uh, follows the play and, and hangs on the rim. And it may have been uh, Luton who gets up there. And now this, this is, his, well, he did. He kind of touched it and then fell off. And they called Arthur Lee, not Brevin Knight. Correctly so, am I that? Well, the chasm draws greater for the Stanford Cardinal. 15-point Husky lead. Yeah, 15, and uh, obviously the Cardinal in, the, in big trouble. That may be their biggest lead of the game. So you're in a situation now, if you're Stanford, you're going to start looking for threes, something they have not done very well in terms of shooting the ball. So you got to look at them and see if you can get some threes down. Now, there's a guy who's been making them the better part of this year, but Arthur Lee couldn't get that one, one only, and here come the dogs once again. And a technical foul on Mike Montgomery. Mike, good thing Richie didn't see Mike uh, mock him a little bit because Mike would have been uh, watching the rest of this one from the uh, locker room. 
Well, at least if you're going to get a technical, make sure the other team has the ball. You certainly don't want to get a technical when your team has it. And uh, that'll be a two-shot opportunity and a ball out of bounds and a frustration technical. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Mike felt that his team was primed, ready to go here this afternoon. And Washington's played a tremendous basketball game. They, they, they deserve all the credit in this one. They've taken it away from Stanford. They've beaten them on the inside. They've made outside shots. And they defended well. And they've done a terrific defensive job on Brevin Knight. I mean, and that's the key. Stanford cannot win if Knight goes out there and shoots three out of 15. It's very difficult to pick up that scoring side. Take a look at what Brevin Knight has done from the field today. And as you see, I mean, that is very uncharacteristic, needless to say, of, uh, of, of a guy who most people feel will be a first-team All-American player. Brevin has yet to commit a turnover right, with the five assists, so that, that end of his game has been very consistent. Knight steps in front of that inbounds pass. He's not going to get off it, I'll tell you that. There's a lot of people saying, why is it Tim Young in the game? You know, he's, he's a big... Well, the reason he's not in it is Stanford has to play catch-up. He so might have had a travel. No call. Oh, and it's over and back, that call. That's a tough call on Todd McCullough. Now, Bob didn't like the call, but I tell you, it was a good call because his pivot foot looked like it was in the front court, and he went, he went back and forward. Brevin Knight bounces it off the knee of Van Ellswick, and that's exactly what you were talking about. That was not a bad pass. It's just that Pete Van Ellswick wasn't ready for He's one of those players that when you're playing alongside uh, Brevin Knight, you had better have your hands ready all the time because he's one of those guys that will surprise you with a pass and that uh, you can ill afford to miss it. Now back it up if you're Washington. You don't need more points. You need to run some clock. The points will come because Stanford will foul, and you'll get some high percentage shots if you put some touches on the ball. Goes by Mosley and is blocked from behind, but the foul. I, I like the decision by Sanford to back it out, and then of course Luton. Does a very nice job of, of driving the baseline under control and drawing the foul. And Van Ellswick was the guilty party, his third. That'll bring Mark Matson back in the ballgame. Remember, Matson has four. Young on a bench with three. What Mike is looking for now, he's going to go with a smaller team, quicker club. A unit that can go out there and press full court. You're in that mode right now, so you have to kind of create some turnovers if you're the Cardinals. The only, your only hope of trying to get back in this game, and of course, it, it would be uh, one of the better comebacks that you'll ever see. You know, here's here's something too that you won't see very often, Danny. Yeah, in rebounds. And this is a Stanford with eight and Washington with 23 rebounds. So, you know, that tells a lot about what's going on in this game. Well, Matson takes it to the basket and draws the foul. That's a pretty remarkable number. Yeah, it is. And that second half rebound, 23 to 8 for Washington. Well, they set the tone right away. I mean, they, they didn't waste any time. Beautiful pass inside. And this is one thing Matson could do. Very strong in there, very effective. Uh, does a nice job to shield his body, pick up the foul, and finish the play. Mike Montgomery still jawing at Richie Ballesteros. And here now they will extend their defense. You have to go full court if you're the Cardinal. Pick them up, get all over them, try to double team, take a few chances. You have to go for the ball. They get it ahead to Booker. And Bob Bender up off the bench and slow it down while Arthur Lee reached in from behind. You're going to take a foul. May as well take it quick. Well, why not? I mean, yeah, take a foul and, and hope you can get uh, a miss. Uh, double bonus situation. So, Wooten will go to the line shooting two. That's what we were just talking about. Washington with a 15 rebound edge in the second half. And that uh, you just don't see. You don't often see a Stanford team get out rebounded to begin with, let alone out rebounded by 15. 
Well, it's been a pretty consistent pattern throughout this game that the Cardinal have not been able to get any second efforts at the offensive end. I mean, Washington has rebounded well. They've given the Cardinal that one shot. And, and at, at their end of the floor, they've been able to get second and third efforts. So that, that's a good uh, good job by the Huskies. And uh, coming off the Cal loss, uh, they, they've done a real nice, uh, nice effort this afternoon against a good Stanford team. Stanford's got the balance of their schedule in their favor, no question about it. They go at home to play San Diego State on Monday night, non-conference game, and then they've got Cal at home, and, and uh, so they've got the remainder of their of their schedule uh, at home, and then they finish with the Arizona School. So this is the last road game of the year uh, for Mike Montgomery. And here is that remaining schedule. Uh, you and I will see them uh, Monday night against San Diego State, and they play Cal, as you said, at Maples. And then the Arizona schools come calling. Stanford got a turnover off Arthur Lee, and Pete Sauer missed the three. Matson gives him another chance and draws the foul. Well, Matson's got great hands around the glass. I mean, he's one of those guys that tries to rebound on every shot and, and did a beautiful jab that time to just to pick it off the air and, and take it up strong. Now, Mike, Mike is still talking. <laughs> Maybe Mike's trying to pick up that second. Well, team. I don't know. I, I, I would imagine, you know, Matson makes these two free throws. He's got his team within 11. I'm not saying that uh, that there's a good chance that he could pull this one out, but stranger things have happened, and uh, he doesn't want it when Matson missed the free throw. That doesn't help. Matson's had two pretty ugly looking free throws the last two. Missed them both short. Maybe that basket is two inches higher. Well, it might be. And then a foul. On the Well, strange, you know, stranger things have happened. As you said, you get those down, you knock them both down, you're down 11. And four and a half is still plenty of time. Obviously, you're not in great shape to win the game, but still, if you get a turnover, two and a three, and you get it down to six or seven, uh, it puts some pressure on the other team. Now, Richie, I know, gave Mike his last warning, so there's, they're not going to go too much further with Mike. And Wooten very much a factor here in the second half. Huskies have a pretty fair point guard coming in, guy by the name of Dan Pickow out of Vancouver, Prairie View High School, who is rated in the top 15 of uh, senior high school point guards. Chris Williams for three misses. And the Huskies with the majority of their team back, so I mean, uh, things look good for, for Washington. Nice effort. Boy, Matson is a powerhouse going to the glass. Chris Williams can't get that foul. The problem is Stanford just can't stop the Huskies. Huskies playing very smart. That's a quick J, and they get it. Well, that's the way it's been going. I'll not a good right. one, but why not? And I was looking right at Bob Bender, and as soon as that shot went up, Bob went, oh! Yeah, great shot. Yeah, exactly. Well, he's done that a couple of times this afternoon. <laughs> That's what it's all going right for you. Sauer misses, and Booker with a rebound and the reach in. Now they make, oh, it 20 a, seconds. Yeah, make it a quick 20 before the foul. <laughs> I don't know if you could see if we do. Take a look at the uh, schedule for Washington. There's the Washington schedule. They have to go on the road. Something they have not done very well this year. They play at Arizona State and Arizona. Then they finish. And by the way, they've got UCLA and USC. So a very tough schedule remaining for Bob Bender and the Huskies, where I think Stanford has, has a much easier road playing the remaining four at home, although California playing exceptionally well. And they've got Arizona, Arizona State at home, and San Diego State. So I think Stanford's still in pretty good shape. Even though they lose this, I look for them to win three of the remaining four at least and get in the tournament, where Bob Bender is going to have to really get some upsets in order to get in. Game being played uh, right at the moment in Pullman. And how, how about this? Well, you never know in a Pac-10 conference. Look at that. Washington State up 11. And of course, California was down 14 in the first half to the Huskies and came back and won. Got a five second call, and Stanford will get the ball back with 3.33 remaining. That game at Pullman still in the first half. That, that's a nice comeback for uh, the Cougars who were. Uh, did not play very well, to be quite honest, the other night against Stanford. Stanford won the game, and the Cougars seemed like a team that was headed south. But they're coming back today. We're coming back, too.
Welcome back, 69-53, Washington over the Stanford Cardinals. It's a game that, uh, as we mentioned earlier, Washington had to have, and so far they're going out and getting it. And uh, here's what Stanford has done beyond the arc. Uh, dismal, two of 13. And that's only part of the reason for this game, being the way it is. Bremen might miss another shot. It's just uh, one of those days to forget for Bremen. exactly where Washington would like them. They, they really like very comfortable in a 60, 70 point game and they dictated the tempo in the second half and, and done an exceptional job defending the Cardinals. Here's something you don't see very often either, Danny, as Arthur Lee misses the three point shot. Yeah, and Stanford doesn't have a guy in double figures. You know, it, it, Barry just handed me a note. So that, that is something you, you don't see very often. So Stanford, a very deep team. They'll throw 10, 11 people at you. But Mike Montgomery normally will have someone out there that, that does a good job at the offensive end. But not this afternoon. Fourth foul on Pete Sauer. And uh, for Bob Bender, you know, it's one of those uh, the longest journey begins with but a single step, and here's a single step. That's what he said before the game that uh, we have to pick ourselves up off the floor. We lost to California. We absolutely must have this win this afternoon. And then we still have four tough games to go, but we have to start somewhere. This team responded. And I thought the difference in the game, Barry, was the way Washington approached the second half. McCullough called for the ball. He had Young in foul trouble. He scored the first couple of goals. From that point on, it was all Husky. So give them credit because they put the ball down on the block and took advantage of the weakness Stanford had in their lineup in terms of foul problems and took advantage of it. Brett and I tried to grab Wooten and can't get that right today either. That's been a complete performance by the Huskies. And, uh, I like what Wooten brings to the table also. You know, he's a guy that won't turn it over very much. He makes good decisions, and that's something that uh, uh, Washington has not had in the backcourt for a long time. Tonight tried to double clutch. He missed that. And McCullough with a rebound, and he's got Sauer on his arm, who was just fouled out of the ballgame. And, and I thought an, a, another aspect of the game that, that hurt Stanford was Sauer had the three fouls in the first half, had limited playing time in the second half, and I thought he was very productive for the Cardinal in the first half. He scored inside, he passed the ball, and they need Peter Sauer in the game, but uh, he was not able to play much in this particular game because of the fouls. It's not that bad, Pete. You just have to, things will get better. You go home, you've got four remaining. You just have to regroup. And one thing about it, players are resilient. You saw Washington State the way they came back this afternoon so far in the first half. Washington came back. So, and I'm sure Stanford will also. They have a game Monday night against San Diego State. I suspect they'll come out and play well. They got to win that game now. I mean, they need all the W's they can get. Todd McCullough, really the difference. Uh, he won the battle with this man, Tim Young. And, uh, uh, he got Pete Sauer on his arm to foul out, and uh, now he not only doesn't have Young and Sauer on his arm, he doesn't have them on his hands. Sixth double-double of the year for uh, Todd McCullough, and he has just done a terrific job today. It's just that simple. And he got a lot of help from his friends. Mark Sanford, great contributor in the first half, and Wooten picked it up in the second half. And Pretty well, much the way you draw it up. Isn't yeah, it? You know, and it's a maturing Mark Sanford. Now, now, here's a guy that I'm sure could have looked to score more in the second half, but you know what? They didn't need him as much in the second. He made a big three at a critical time, but he has matured greatly at both ends of the floor. And there's another guy who, again, he, he does just all those little things that, that don't necessarily show up. That one will show up, but I think Booker's been a real factor in the second half, too, especially on the defensive end. Well, I, I think what the uh, Bob Bender will tell you uh, after the game, this is as good as a half as, as his team has played all year. I mean, they've been just about perfect in the second half at both ends of the floor. You know? and, and, and dare I say, too, that it's been Booker, and you mentioned this early in the ballgame, it's been Booker who's done the majority of the defensive work on Brevin Knight. So Booker has taken the challenge, and, and uh, in, in all fairness to Brevin, I think he's had some good looks and the ball hasn't gone down, but still, regardless of that fact, uh, Booker's done a nice job uh, defending in this particular game. California incidentally has uh, closed that Washington State lead to five there at halftime and it's uh, Washington State 46 and the Bears 41 but I would have to think that that tempo favors California. Yes it does. So California a team that uh, does not worry much if they get behind a very good offensive team and, and a good defensive team by the way so I I'm sure that game uh, California still with a good opportunity to win. Mike Fontaine uh, will become, I'm quite certain, in that ballgame needs about eight points, the all-time leading scorer of Washington State. Yeah, I like Fontaine. I think he's certainly a player that, that can move up and play in the NBA, a second guard, a, a very good
six shooter. And Stanford now just not going to foul. They're just going to in a situation where there's needless to make fouls. Let's go ahead and just keep playing. And Wooten, for some reason, pulled the trigger. Really didn't have to. Arthur Lee the other way. Hard fall by Booker. He went down hard. And it, it's going to be Stanford ball. But Booker just playing hard and might have rolled an ankle in the process. Tough guy. Yes, he is a tough guy. And uh, the one thing you don't want to do if you're if you're the Huskies, this game is in control. We've won the game. Certainly, you don't want to get anybody hurt. And, and I'm, I'm quite frankly a little bit surprised that, uh, that that Bob Bender hasn't taken some of his guys out for that particular reason. Brevin Knight out of the game uh, did not have one of his better afternoons, but uh, Brevin will bounce back. The rebound for Booker. And Booker lost the handle on that. Might have stepped on the sideline. Did competitor though. And Bob Bender saying, hey, guys, he went with the old finger to the head play, you know, like, hey, fellas, we're, we're ahead. Let's just waste the clock. And uh, Brevin not feeling real good about the situation this afternoon. But I really believe uh, Stanford's still a team that will get in the NCAA tournament because I think they will finish strong uh, at the end of the season and will win at least three of the remaining four games at home. And I think the Huskies are going to, even though they do not have a good uh, rating in terms of power rating, uh, this win is going to help them beating a ranked team. They've already had wins over UCLA and Arizona. And now Bob Bender will go to his bench as Moritz comes into the ball game and Booker leaves and uh, very good victory for uh, this Washington team. Yeah, great job by uh, by Jamie Booker. I mean, he did a terrific job at the defensive end of the floor. And as you said, this is a quality win. It's a team that did beat Arizona. They've got UCLA still at home. They've got the Bruins and, and SC uh, here at, in Seattle. And, and I'm sure that will, uh, that, that those will be games that uh, certainly this team can win. It, although it will not be easy. Did it without Donald Watts, too. And uh, you can't have, that's 10 points a game. That was not in the lineup tonight. They will back this out. When it's all done, there'll be about 20 seconds left. Well, McCullough. Gonna give me that, I'm gonna take it. Now, McCullough has not hurt his field goal percentage uh, th this afternoon. I mean, it's a guy that shoots about 70%. That's about what he's done here in this game. Combashione tried the reverse, and Matson uh, jams another one in. Matson uh, carrying a lot of the scoring load here I in the like, second half. I think Matson is, is, is a guy that has great up, upside uh, for the Cardinal. He's a young man that will play more and more, uh, you know, obviously in the years to come, but even uh, in the remaining part of the season. I know all the coaches have been high the way Mark, uh, are high on Mark Matson, the way he's been playing. Thompson missed the shot. Arthur Lee clears, and Weems. Lines up a three and gets that one with two seconds remaining in this one. And it is over. And the Washington Huskies have kept their NCAA playoff hopes alive. Uh, they're not breathing at a steady rate, but they're breathing. Yeah, they are breathing, and they needed to start somewhere. Great effort by Samford. McCullough inside. Wooten, terrific second half. And I think the Washington defense probably as good as I've seen it all year. So congratulations to the Huskies. And I'm sure Stanford will regroup. They've got four more at home, Barry. And I think the Cardinal will come on strong at the end of the year. I'll tell you what, I think they're going to have to. They have San Diego State. That was a game that was really in a category of meaningless. And now they got to go get it. That's a wrap for us from here in Seattle. For my partner, Dan Belwamity, I'm Barry Tompkins. So long, everybody.